The Mural Gazer, Episode 6, Help Wanted. Once you turn off Highway 1 onto the winding downhill slope of Henry Road, your run into Chimenez gathers momentum, and you don't have to think anymore. There can be no other destination. The drive-in seemed rote to Buddy, the Matrix having an inbred sense of the road's dips and curves, the extravagantly landscaped traffic circle that swung by the Horseshoe Pub, the Best Western Hotel, and the historic Macmillan Blodell locomotive number 1044 trapped on its bit of track. I'd been here before, but he remembered. A family trip. He put the memory back in its box, pulling up opposite an Ace hardware store, then jogged across the road through a break in the traffic. Can I help you? a young man asked cheerfully from behind the counter. Yeah, but he felt it would be churlish not to take advantage of the clerk's expertise. Do you have any flexible drain pipe? Plumbing's over there, the clerk nodded to an aisle behind Buddy. Longer sections are out front in the yard. Need a hand? No, nah, just picking up a few things for a small job. I'll be okay. The shortest length of hose he could find was eight feet for twelve ninety nine. That's okay, he reasoned. If it's too long, just cut off what you need, maybe five feet, and chuck the rest. In the heating, cooling, and ventilation section, he picked up a 27-meter roll of duct tape for six forty-nine. That ought to do. Find everything you needed, the clerk asked when Buddy got back to the counter. Yeah, duct tape, the handyman's best friend, eh? Just a small job, Buddy repeated, unnerved by his own evasiveness. A temporary fix. The clerk eyed him with what looked like suspicion, then rang the items in. Comes to 1377 with tax, he said. But he tapped, refused a bag, and said he didn't need a receipt. Know a good coffee shop in town, he asked, heading for the door. The Willow. Take your first right, then your first left, then look for a big yellow building on the right-hand side of the street. Can't miss it. Thanks, Buddy said curtly, annoyed at the clerk's vaguely accusatory attitude. Continuing down Shimanus Road, he followed the directions to the willow, wedged the matrix into a parking spot in front of the cafe, made his way up the steps and across the veranda. It was too cold for patrons outside, so the tables were empty, the umbrellas furled. He stepped inside, closing the door behind him. Medium coffee for here, he said at the counter. The server took his money, gave him a cup, and pointed to a bank of thermoses against the side wall. But he filled it, doctored his coffee up, then took a window seat. Ten messages and fifteen texts had been logged into his mobile since he'd hit the road. Later, he sighed. In that moment of malaise, I noticed a newspaper discarded on the table next to mine. Later, Buddy would claim an enhanced sense of destiny guided his distracted glance and locked his focus onto the front page of the Chimenez Valley Courier. He normally would have ignored it. But something provoked me, urged me to flip through as if there might be an item of interest in there for me, as if Shemanus might somehow be more than a place I was just passing through. He scanned the headlines listlessly. Penelicut purchases 49th Parallel, more than $1,300 raised by Wildwood Collective's haircutting fundraiser. Striking workers in Shemanus expect the end isn't near. To Buddy, that might as well have been news from another planet, but he continued... Why am I reading this stuff, he wondered. No answer pinged back to him. Again, the sensation of moving forward by rote impelled him, the pages folding back like drawn curtains, one abstraction giving way to another, next, 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 until he hit the minuscule classified section. And there it was, what I must have been looking for. Help wanted. Elderly couple seeks caring handyman companion. Light chores and non-medical support. Quiet, seaside setting. Flexible part-time hours. In exchange for room and board in private, fully equipped RV suite. Contact Bernice and Harry Sand at... He read the address. This is crazy. But he tapped the mail icon at the bottom of his iPad screen anyways, and his inbox popped open. For Christ's sake, no. His index finger pecked again, and a new message template opened. He typed the email address into the to field, then caring tenant help wanted in the subject line, then I'm a 61-year-old newly homeless man passing through Shemanus with no place in particular to go and no timeline to adhere to. 
can't promise how long I might stay or claim any training or expertise as a handyman companion. But if you want someone to take up the position on a trial basis, I'd be happy to meet with you. Regards, Buddy Hope. He tapped send, then got up to go. They can't possibly agree to that, he chuckled, heading out the door, relieved to be on his way.